start. Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your girl Mitzi, and this is Mitzi. Let's think about it. We are thinking about today the Dulce meditation, and I'm I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are curious, like, what is the difference between the Dulce meditation versus just regular meditation, or just what's so important about it? Well, luckily for me, I have a special guest on my show named Kevin Roth, who is going to share his perspective and his thoughts on this matter and how he ha- he is a new man because of it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kevin, for, doing, uh, for coming on my show. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Awesome. So I guess to get right to the point, what is the difference between the Dulce meditation and just regular meditation? What makes well, it so different? Uh, well, I'll start with showing you what a dulcimer is. So this is the musical instrument called the dulcimer. Okay. It's a folk uh, instrument. It's very easy to play. This is one of many that I own. Uh, I play it on my lap. So because of the camera angle, you, you can't hear me play it, but I'll show you what it sounds like. So it's very, very sweet. And it's very easy to play because the frets on it are like the do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, ti scale, you know? Oh, okay, okay. I've been playing the dulcimer for 51, 52 years. Oh, wow. I uh, made many records for uh, folk music and children's music and pop music and written several books. And then as I talked about in my book, which I believe I sent you, called uh, Between the Notes, A Practical Guide to Finding Your Inner Groove and Dancing to a Beach, you can, you know, finding a song that you can dance to in your life. Uh, In 2016, I was diagnosed with stage three melanoma and um, it never came back, so I'm fine. But during that time, I became what some call a life coach because I went through enough of an experience to say, well, stress and inflammation and negativity and uh, feeling stuck in life are things that can cause disease. Mm -hmm. So I became a life coach. I call it a lifestyle consultant because I wrote the book and coach people personally, one-to-one on how to look at life differently and change the way you, you live your life and think about your life. So part of that process was that the way I play certain uh, dulcimer styles, because there's lots of styles, is one called a meditation. And I just call it a dulcy meditation. So that's what I teach. And it's basically uh, you learn to play very, very simply. And as you're playing, uh, your body becomes relaxed. And then you're able to uh, kind of go within yourself and ask some important questions like, what is this fear I'm feeling about? What is this doubt about? Um, what should I do next? And it's remarkable that my clients um, always find not only peace, because you can do this within five or 10 minutes, but they find answers. So that led um, to me also uh, composing specific dulcet meditations for different clients. So I have, if I have a client that comes to me and they say, you know, I'm really stressed out about this test coming up, I will create a special spoken word dulcy meditation um, written out almost like I do like a song and then put music behind it. So those are individualized dulcy meditations. So there's the kind that you can do on your own. And then there's the kind that I create for you. Yeah. Yeah. I can see it's, it's, I, I, I respect the fact that you say it's it's basically like music, you know. It's healing your soul because you hear the you hear the sound, you hear the way that the the dulce meter is that the dulce meditation. Dulce meditation. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I probably say it wrong a couple more times. I'm sorry. Um, I I appreciate how it can soothe and can help you change the way that you think and the way that you ask yourself your real questions because music is a healing and he really heals someone you know you can really get lost into music it can even be hypnotic sometimes you know it just puts you in this trance this this level of just 
of peace, you know, of this, of the planes of the world and your spirit. And it is very interesting how you were able to have um, patience of yours go to that level because it's not easy for everybody to go to that level. You know, it seems like you kind of have to be at that that I need to change my life level to actually kind of receive this. Is that right? Yes, um, I, I do want to correct you. I don't have patience because I'm not a doctor, but I... I... <laughs> So but the, the thing about the dulcy meditation is the mountain dulcimer is so easy to play. They teach it in elementary schools. So you can play it simply or, or sophisticated. Um, but an analogy of the dulcy meditation is when a, a child or a baby is crying in a crib, the parent comes and winds up the toy above the crib. And whatever the mind that the kid's upset about, whatever's going on in his mind, is now suddenly lost and is now fixated on this object. And then it stops crying, unless, of course, it's in trouble, real trouble. So when we, uh, as human beings, when we believe our thoughts, our negative thoughts, we suffer. But it's just the mind. It's just the mind. So mm -hmm. if you um, have a, a negative experience, uh, let's say shopping, or let's say you're driving somewhere and someone uh, you know, gets in front of you and almost causes an accident, you can take two different ways of looking at it. You can say, well, that guy's an idiot. And what was he doing trying to kill me? And then you suffer. Or you could say, I don't know what happened there, but, you know, God, I hope he doesn't do that to somebody else and drop it. So if you hold on to the negativity, you suffer. If yes. you let it go, you're, you're good. So everything is the mind. And that's what I teach as a uh, facilitator is how to look at things differently. But the problem is, is that the mind never keeps quiet. The mind always brings things up. So this mm -hmm. is an antidote to that. This is a way of picking up a small folk instrument, putting it on your lap, lullabying yourself in a sense, telling yourself, whatever is going on, this too shall pass, and getting clarity. So while the mind is listening to the simple music, you go in and you ask, what is going on this morning? And you may hear, well, I'm afraid of this test. Let's just say it's a medical test. I'm afraid of a medical test. And then you can say to yourself, well, it may be good. The result may be fine. So you'll know this afternoon when you see the doctor. So for now, just surrender it and you'll be fine. And that's how you do life rather than having life do you. Correct, correct. <laughs> I was actually speaking to someone about that, how we have to acknowledge which direction our, our what ifs are going towards, if they're going to a negative perspective or a positive perspective. And usually we always end up leaning towards the negative because unfortunately people are tired of having or putting their hopes up, or putting their hopes up, you know, and getting disappointed. I mean, what is your opinion on people no longer having any hope anymore well there's always hope because there's always another day you know um, i was given a death sentence i was told by four different oncologists in 2016 there's no cure there's nothing we can do for you and you're probably going to be dead within two years and i just looked at my own gut my own feeling my own truth using dulcy meditation and what i felt and heard is they're wrong I don't, I don't feel like I'm going to be dead. I'm absolutely sure of it. But I do need to change my life. So I moved from the Midwest. I changed my diet. Um, I started to eat an anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory diet, which is delicious because I love to cook. And I moved to San Diego. I found a, an apartment for $1,000 a month, six miles from the beach. I created what I wanted. And mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I'm telling everybody that listens to it, I will show you how to do it. It's not difficult. The difficulty is saying, oh, well, but I've got this. I've got, I had all kinds of things. I had debt. I had a death sentence. I had all kinds of things go wrong in my life. And I just put an X through that story and said, I'm rewriting my journey. And I did it. Yeah. It seems like a lot of people have to have that almost death experience to really get that wake up call. It's very interesting because, you know, I have people contact me a lot that want to work with me. And, um, you know, I'll mention things like, uh, you know, if you can't afford to, to work with me, you know, not that I'm terribly expensive, 
but you could go buy my book, you know, let's say whatever it is, it's 17 or $18. And they'll say things to me like, all right, I'll put it on the list. Or, well, when I get some extra cash. And then I'll say, well, how many times a week do you go to Starbucks? And they go, well, once or twice. And I say, well, there buys your book. So you have to get to the point where you're ready to change. And part of that process is recognizing that you're unhappy, that you're stuck, that you feel stressed, that you're human, and that you love yourself enough and respect yourself enough to say, I'm going to change. There's me, there's this God, Jesus, Moses, Buddha, whatever you want to call it, that's in charge of everything. And doctors and debt collectors and abusive relationships are not the final say. It starts with me. And when you realize that, you've already won. You're already there, but you got to get on the road. I have people, I say, you know, when you read my book, contact me, I never hear from them again. And then there are those that contact me and they say, oh my God, I just read your book. I saw you on a podcast and it was like, it was meant to be. How soon can we start to work together? You know, and even if they can't afford it, sometimes people can't afford it. They'll, there's the two types of people. One will say, well, I, I can't afford it whatever the price is. And other people will say, I can't afford it now, but can you do a payment plan for me? Or can I come clean your house? Or what can I do to work with you? And you come to me with that kind of heart and intention, we'll figure it out. That's nice. That's nice that you have that and, and that you have the passion because it shows that it's not just about money, it's about sincerity. And that's what you're looking for. If you're willing to be sincere and you're willing to put put your heart out there and to truly help someone, then you will at least respect you expect that type of respect in, in return. Are you are you willing to have that sincerity trying to be sincere in your life and make it happen and make it real? You know, and I respect that. A lot of people need to come with those guidelines and come with those boundaries and just come with that setup. Yeah, you know, when I got diagnosed with the melanoma, um, I didn't have any, I was at a point in my life where I didn't have any money and I found someone who had survived stage four melanoma. Mm -hmm. And she said, I have a program and I can work with you, but it costs this much. I said, I don't have the money, but can I write some music for you for your website? Mm -hmm. And she said, all right, okay. Cause you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a known musician. So I bartered, I found a way in. Her name was yeah. Claire. So she helped me. It's my thing to help other people, but I, I need to hear that they want, that they're ready to be helped because it, it's work. You know, you have to think about things. You got to look at your life with me and uh, work out a game plan. So the three things are what matters, <clears throat> why does it matter, and what are you going to do about it? And the dulcimer with dulcimer meditation is a way of, like I said, lullabying yourself in into a soothing state where you know that everything is going to be fine yeah that you're going to be able to make it that that it's not a big of a deal that we make it seem you know sometimes we do we do play in our minds and we feed our thoughts and and our emotions more than what it needs to so that's nice but, but when you hear when i know you said it comes with the what really matters but that's very subjective you know everyone's importance of what matters to them is always going to be different so how do you how do you determine what really matters or depending on what the person says do you just accept it as is or do you try to strive to push them to to reach further well when i was diagnosed what i asked is what really matters to me and there were only three things my dog my music and my art mm -hmm. Okay. So why do they matter? It's because I'm a musician and I'm an artist. So mm -hmm. what am I going to do about that? How am I going to create a life? So you need to get out of debt, which I found a way to do. You know, um, you need to get out of Kansas where you're living because you're not happy there. Mm -hmm. And you need to go to where you're happy, which is for me, it's San Diego where I live and create a life and be very clear what you want to do and what you don't want to do, what feels right, what doesn't feel right, what your purpose is. You know, we all know, let's say if you want to lose weight, if you really want to lose weight, let's say you have high blood pressure and the doctor says, you know, you're on borderline trouble here or you're almost diabetic. If you go into a bakery and you get a piece of cake or you eat something like that, you are assisting the problem. But if you say to yourself, 
you know what? I've had a piece of cake a gazillion times. It's not where I want to be. I don't want to be diabetic. I need to lose weight. I need to get my blood pressure down. I, I want to feel healthy and I can do this. Yeah, you may feel deprived that you're not getting the cake, but you're going to be healthier. You're not going to be on medication. You're, the, the exchange is so much more than, than the problem. So you need to know what really matters to you, you know, yeah. your yeah, life, but... you know, or do you want to be in a relationship that's toxic? You know, do you want to be in a job you hate, but you have to do it? You know, I had a woman, I'll tell you real quick, a, a woman who said, well, you know, I've got a mortgage and I've got you know two car payments. And I said, your kids are out of the house. Why don't you downsize? Do you need two cars? And she looked at me like I was like, oh, wow, I guess I don't. So she sold her house. She made money and she's renting because she was in her 60s at that point. You know, she made her money back. But we, we get stuck, uh, especially a lot of people tell me, oh, I couldn't move. I have so many things. You know, I don't. Well, what things in your house do you need? Do you need six closets full of clothes? Do you, Well, I can't give these things up. Yes, you can. Yeah. Salvation. You know, so. How, wouldn't you love to live in California, San Diego at the beach instead of uh, Milwaukee where it's freezing, you know, unless you love Milwaukee. I mean, I have some friends in Milwaukee, nothing against Milwaukee, but if you really want it, you'll do it. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a guy I saw on one of the news programs who had struggled with weight and he had a heart attack and the doctor came in while his wife and his two kids were there. And he said, the next heart attack will most likely be the end of you. So if you want to see your kids grow up, and you want to keep your family together, you have to lose weight. You're at that point. What are you going to do? And he lost 240 pounds. Yeah, the will is there. I mean, when the somebody really there. has the will, you can do anything. Yeah, but you don't have you don't have to get there. You you can <laughs> say by doing things like dulcet meditation, you know, I'm I'm a little unhappy and I don't know what to do about it. You know, and I go through this myself every day. You know, I I, I like to hike. Well, it's now getting time where it's really hot. And I always bring my dog Bosco with me. You know, in fact, he's he's here now. So I'll bring him. I'll bring him on the show. This little Bosco. Oh, what the cuteness. Look at the cuteness. Oh, cute? Anybody who's listening in audio, you guys need to see the video because this dog is a wiener dog, mind yeah. you. And wiener dogs are the best dogs. Yeah. They're the cutest so, ever. So I had to say to myself, you know, it's too hot for him. And I know you like to bring him. And I started to feel guilt, like, well, maybe I shouldn't go, or maybe I should go later. And I did some dulcet meditation this morning. What came to me is the dog will live. You'll be gone for two hours. You need to hike. You need to exercise. And he's been walked. And you go out for two hours, and you come back, and that's, that's what you do. That's the right thing to do. But the mind likes to, oh, I well, should bring him, and he likes to go, and but it's too hot, and we could hurt his paws, and the heat. So that's how dulcet meditation work, it says. What is right for you is you want to go hiking. It's good for you. It's a beautiful day out. Your dog will live. He'll be just fine. It sounds like it really calms the mind and and it helps you focus on what's what really matters. And 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 I think that's the real thing that we all need to ask ourselves: what really matters? Because right now it seems like comfort is what matters to us. As long as a human is comfortable in whatever chaos that they are in then they're fine. And I feel like that this that's not fine. You know, that's not fine. We can't be so comfortable in our chaos that it literally destroys our health, destroys our mind, that we can't even progress forward. You know? Yeah, and that's why I wrote the book, you know, for people who, who don't, who don't want to, you know, who can't work with me or don't see me and when I give lectures or things like that or, or speaking engagements. And it outlines not only about my music career, but about the, the cancer and how I survived it and what I'm doing now. I'm right. I'm starting to write a new book called Lighter. You know, lighter. lighter. What is that about? It's about living lighter. It's about uh, lighter. Like you don't need a lot in life to be really happy. Kind of a minimalistic journey, finding happiness in the small things. Yeah, that's the best thing. That's that's what I keep seeing. That's the. That's the what's trending right now is what as people say they can, I see everywhere I know on social yeah. media is that people showing their minimal life where they don't have so many things in their house. It's okay, a sofa, a, a TV, 
not even a lamp sometimes, you know, just yeah. very simple. And it's in reality, sometimes we cause our chaos, we cause the clutter because we feel the need to either compete with somebody else or we feel the need that, oh, that picture on my wall is going to make me feel better. Is it though? Is that picture really going to yeah. make you feel better? Yeah. That's the nice thing about musical instruments, especially the dulcimer, because back in the 1800s, when they when they were playing these in the mountains of Appalachia and such, they would just take the simple folk instrument off the wall and they would, or the fire mantle and just strum it really, really simply and just kind of relax and have a good time just picking and, you know, maybe drinking some tea or coffee or schnapps or whatever they drink up there. And it's it's such a beautiful, simple instrument. Uh, you know um that, and but I, that's the beauty in simplicity you know yeah that's yeah. the beauty of it you know and people should start thinking about it different especially if people are like yourself who are a musician and who's into arts and i mean a lot let's be honest a lot of people who are into arts are usually because they have a lot of emotions that they're trying to express out in some way you know and i think this is a good way to calm the chaos while expressing your art at the same time and yeah. and i guess to start wrapping up the show what would be some great advice that you can leave my audience with even though you already gave us some already awesome stuff what would what could be some lasting words for for my audience well you have the you have the god-given right to be happy yes and in order to be happy you need to know what's making you suffer yes because we get used to suffering. We, we get addicted to suffering. So if watching the news makes you angry, watch less news. If you feel like you need to lose weight, there's tons of ways to do it. Intermittent fasting, cooking. If you want to learn a musical instrument, if you want to learn to meditate in a different way, contact me for Dulcie Meditation. If you want to work with a life coach or a lifestyle consultant, I'm around, uh, you know, my book's around, there are other people around. Um, but simple is best, you know, that they say s simple, stupid, right? Well, it's true. Simple, 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 because by keeping things simple, you have the room to notice and have awareness for where you're at at any given moment. So that mindfulness is, is important. That'll keep you back on track by keeping mindfulness in mind it's like retuning a guitar you know you can tune a guitar but during the day it's going to go out of tune from playing or the heat or whatever so you just need to slightly retune but if you don't retune it it's going to keep going more and more out of tune so just learn to tune yourself hmm, that's a great analogy thank you thank you for that that's awesome see i love people when they put it in a visual format because i'm a visual learner and i can see things when people speak it in words and that was something that made perfect sense to me. So I appreciate that. And I hope that whoever's listening, that it makes sense to you as well, because he really was able to put this conversation in a very simple terms that was like, hmm, it gives us a lot to think about. So thank you for that, Kevin. Yeah. If you want some more ideas, just go to my website, kevinross.org. And there's lots of different ideas that I have there and the book and the music and all that kind of stuff is there. But if you're curious about changing your life, look at the website. It, tell, it tells you pretty clearly what to do. Exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, look at the website. You can find his website on my website. And you just click on his lovely photo. He's holding the musical instruments, the dulcimer. Dulcimer. <laughs> right. sorry he's holding the dulcimer so you know that it's him just click his website and you find all of his great content and you will not be disappointed because this has been such a great conversation thank you so much no, for being you. on my show all righty y'all that's it that's the show always 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 keep thinking y'all bye